Hello everybody, welcome back to Steven's Fight Show, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Shakur Stevenson, who is one of the best young fighters in the game today. Shakur Stevenson has been one of my favorite boxers to watch this year, and what he's done so far in his career has been absolutely impressive. The dude has shown a lot of talent, a lot of skill, and a lot of potential to be a great fighter in the boxing game. And he has a good fight against a fighter that is named Robson. I can't say his last name, I don't know how to say it, so I'll just call him Robson. But he has a fight on Friday, which is the same day that this video is coming out. And it's going to be Shakur's last fight at the 130 pound division, in which we'll get into in a minute. And in this video, I'm going to give you my official prediction on what I think Shakur versus Robson is going to turn out like. So without further ado, let's get into it. So Shakur Stevenson is one of the best young boxers in the game today. And at 25 years old, he's absolutely incredible and has achieved so many accolades in the amateurs like the 2014 IBA Youth World Championship and even qualified for the Olympic boxing team in 2016 where he unfortunately came up short in the end but he did win the silver medal. And if you compare him to all the young boxers in the game today like Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Jesse Bam Rodriguez, Virgil Ortiz Jr, Xander Zayas, and Teofimo Lopez Jr, it's hard to put more than half the guys I just listed above him. And if we put them up skill for skill with any young boxer in the game today, it's hard to say that they have better skills than Shakur Stevenson. He has pretty much all the attributes needed to become a world championship boxer like speed, precision, distance control, footwork, head movement, etc. His ring IQ as a young fighter is also exceptional as well when it comes to setting up shots and creating openings. He's fantastic for a young fighter and if you take a look at some of his fights, you would usually see 12 rounds of him making guys look absolutely silly and showing the levels between him and his opponents. And although he has great talent for being a young fighter, there's one thing that he lacks that is going to be hard to fix and that is his punching power. He has all the skills in the world to compete at the highest level in his division, but his punching power is one thing that is a detriment. And Shakur, he has a bit of the same problem as Devin Haney where the dude can box and be technical to win the fight, but when he lands on his opponents, they're usually not hurt or wobbled. And an example of that is in the Jamel Herring fight where Shakur was pretty much on a complete different level against Jamel and he was having whatever he wanted in that fight. However, even though he was connecting very fast and very accurate on Jamel, Jamel was never really hurt or out on his legs in that fight. And instead, the fight ended in a TKO where Jamel was just taking too much damage. And even in his other fights where his fights have ended in stoppages, none of his finishes ever came by knocking someone out cold. It's always been a TKO finish, or the ref has to step in to save the fighter. Although it is something that is a hole in Shakur's game, in my opinion it really doesn't affect him as much as other people think that it is. In my opinion, it's something that he doesn't really necessarily need due to his talent and skill as a boxer. He's already such a good technical fighter that he's doing just fine without the punching power. And same goes with Devin Haney as well. And the thing is, he can't help the fact that he has pillow hands, like either some people have it or some people don't. That's just the reality of it. There's bare people out there that are big, fat, and they look like they've never stepped on a treadmill a day in their life, but there's a good chance that they could bang a hard shot. And the same goes for a dude that is anorexic. Depending on how he's built, depending on his genetics, he could have punching power that is greater than some other people. That's just how it is. And another thing that we need to talk about is that Shakur is eyeing his arrival to the 135 pound division sooner than expected since making 130 pounds has taken a toll on him. And in my opinion, I think it does make sense because all the big fights for Shakur lies at the 135 pound division and for him he's only going to get older and his body's going to change and he's going to get bigger and cutting weight at 25 and counting is not going to be as easy as cutting weight when you're 19 years old. So in my opinion Shakur moving up to 135 pounds is an exciting move. Okay so let's talk about the matchup and the styles between both fighters. Shakur has been dominant in his last few fights especially in his last fight against Oscar Valdez who was a really good champion and he made it look easy. He kept his distance against Oscar, never allowed him to get inside and instead he just picked Oscar apart by sticking that jab in his face which is a lethal weapon that he has. And as soon as Oscar overcommits and overreaches, that's when Shakur would land a counter shot to the head or to the body by just stepping a half step outside of range. And when Oscar would try to just relax and stay outside of range and let Shakur be first, Shakur would then change up his attack and give Oscar different looks by throwing combinations that forced Oscar to be more aggressive. He kept Oscar occupied by pawing with his lead hand and keeping him tentative all night which doesn't allow Oscar to see the shots that are coming downstairs and around the guard. The judgment of distance by Shakur was phenomenal. He rarely got hit 
and overall it was a masterclass performance by Shakur. And ironically, Shakur's upcoming opponent, Robson, is Oscar's last opponent, which is interesting because now we can get a clear idea of how the fight is going to go down. And Robson, he has something that Shakur doesn't have, which is that he is an Olympic gold medalist. And he's not a slouch in this division at all. In fact, he gave Oscar a really tough fight. A lot of fans disagreed that Oscar beat Robson. A lot of people thought Robson beat Oscar. And Robson also has a good jab like Shakur, but the difference in my opinion is that Robson is more active with it. Shakur is quick with his jab, but Robson, he might throw two or three just to get you going backwards or try to set up a shot. And he also moves while jabbing to follow up with many different shots that opponents don't see coming. Robson, he throws a variety of combinations like double lead hooks, right hand left hook, left hook right hand, double jab right hook to the body to give his opponents different looks, essentially keeping them busy by paying attention to shots from all different angles. He also has good footwork where he's light on his toes and he slides in and out of range very effortlessly. And I think Robson, he has a style that can compete with Shakur, but is it enough to beat him? So for my official official prediction for this fight, I believe that the fight will end in a decision win for Shakur where he'll apply smart pressure, using the jab, feinting to try to open up shots, and mixing his punches to the head and to the body. I don't think Shakur will stop Robson because for Shakur to win by stoppage, I think he's going to have to dominate this fight, which I don't think will happen because of all the things that Robson can bring to the table. When Shakur wins by KO or TKO, it's usually when he's completely having his way against his opponent and he's landing shots at will which leads his opponents to be defenseless and then forcing the ref to step in. Robson, he does operate partly with the high guard and in the last few fights, Shakur has done a great job of picking apart high guards with his shot selection. And I think Robson is going to be the more active fighter with his pace and his combination punching, but I think Shakur's patience and his distance control will serve him well in the right direction. If Shakur can keep his range and change levels when Robson attacks with combinations, then he has a lot of chances to land counter shots on Robson. We saw it against Oscar and I think it can happen against Robson. Robson is also a good counter puncher as we saw in the Oscar Valdez fight, but I don't think he's a better counter puncher than Shakur. Robson won't be able to counter Shakur like how he did against Oscar Oscar because Shakur isn't as wide and open as Oscar, and instead he's very tight and technical. I think the fight will start off at a decent pace for Shakur, where he'll establish range and pick his shots and feel him out. And towards the middle rounds, I think Robson will start increasing the pace and activity of his jab, body work, combination punching, etc. And in the championship rounds, I see Robson slowing down and staying on the back foot, while Shakur being in control with his front foot pressure and cutting off the ropes to land combos off the ropes. Robson, he's a very skillful fighter, but I think Shakur is better and smarter, where I think Shakur is going to be the one to dictate where and how this fight is going to go. Shakur, he's somebody that is dangerous in a boring fight. And what do I mean dangerous in a boring fight? What I mean is that in a boring fight, where not too much action is happening and where a fight is too technical, Shakur can win those fights. He has a style that is not considered exciting, but it's efficient, and that's what makes him dangerous. And I think he's going to apply that in this fight, where he understands when he needs to step on the gas and when he can just relax, knowing that he's done enough to win a round. He's going to know what shots to throw, he's going to understand what shots are being thrown his way and what he needs to do to adjust. Overall, I think this will be a fight where Shakur wins 8-4 or 9-3. I don't think it will be total domination like how it was with his last few fights where he's going to win by 10-2 or 11-1 or 12-0. And that is it guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to what I have to say. And let me know who you got, Shakur Stevenson or Robson? How do you think Shakur will match up with all the contenders at the 135 pound division? Drop a comment and let me know in the comment section down below. Now if you guys enjoy content that is related to combat sports, please drop a like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. That would be greatly appreciated. And other than that, it's been Steven signing out. Peace.